I love going to aquariums and for Shark Week, Ben and I went to Brighton Sea Life Centre to film some sharks. They have quite a few black tip reef sharks, many of which have been born in captivity and a zebra shark. Filming was pretty difficult as you can see. Anyway, unlike zoos, I never worried too much about the fact that the animals are in captivity until I saw a turtle, which made me feel very sad that it was not able to roam the oceans as it should. And then I started thinking about sharks. Should they be in captivity? I get really excited to see them and spend a lot longer than most people waiting for them to once again pass by the bit of window I'm standing by and watch in awe as they glide by. But is this really fair on them? If not, does it matter if they are being ambassadors and raising public awareness about the plight of sharks? Well, to answer this question, I'm going to first take a look at what species of shark can be kept in aquariums. Until recently, only a few benthic species of shark have survived in aquarium conditions for up to a year or more. These include horn sharks, leopard sharks, cat sharks and zebra sharks. Unlike pelagic sharks, these bottom dwellers don't breathe by ram ventilation, so they don't have to keep moving in order to get the oxygen they need to survive. This makes them relatively easy to transport. And whilst some have a large home range, for example the horned shark likes to roam and feed in an area about 10,000 square feet, they don't migrate, which is useful for a life in a tank. They are also relatively easy to feed, enjoying crustaceans and small fish for their dinner. As technology and knowledge of keeping sharks in captivity has developed, pelagic sharks have started to appear in aquariums, such as the sandbar, sand tiger, and black tip and white tip reef sharks. The sand tiger shark is the most commonly kept large shark in public aquariums, as they are very hardy and tolerate captivity well. The development of acrylic tanks, which are structurally stronger than the old glass tanks, have enabled these structures to be built big enough to allow pelagic sharks enough room to swim constantly, thus maintaining the flow of water over their gills for ram ventilation. Larger tanks means a greater volume of water to filter, so a larger water filter is needed. It is difficult and expensive to make and filter large volumes of seawater, so many aquariums are situated on the coast and use a flow-through system instead of a circulating system. Feeding pelagic sharks is another big issue and they have difficulty adapting well to life in a tank due to this. Sharks need, just like us, essential vitamins and minerals. I'm not sure why, but that really amazed me. Anyway, they can't get that if they are fed a pure protein diet of shrimp or fish, so they have to have supplements. If they don't get these supplements, they can develop wasting disease, goiters from iodine deficiency, and spinal deformities from vitamin C and or vitamin A deficiencies. Apparently, sharks are notorious for spitting out their vitamins and for being picky eaters, so getting their diet correct is very difficult. Many pelagic sharks are hand-fed using feeding prongs. This ensures they are receiving the correct amount of food, which is supplemented with the vitamins. However, some sharks don't easily adapt to this. Transporting pelagic sharks from the wild to captivity is also problematic, but life support systems have been developed that enable them to have a constant flow of water over their gills in order for them to breathe. These larger sharks also need special stretchers to be able to lift and restrain the shark during transportation. The cartilaginous skeleton of the shark provides less protection than a skeleton of a bony fish, and great care needs to be taken to protect the shark from damaging its internal organs by the weight of its own body. But should sharks be kept in captivity at all? Well, the Shark Trust, a UK charity, does not condemn aquariums for having sharks in captivity. Rather, it takes the view that if the aquarium can deliver effective education and engagement around the animal and further species conservation or scientific understanding, then there is a place for the shark to be in the aquarium. However, they do feel that it is inappropriate to attempt to keep plankton eating or migratory species in captivity. And this is also my personal feeling on the subject, or so it was, more on that at the end. Amazingly, there are five aquariums that house whale sharks, three in Japan, one in Taiwan and one in North America. 
They are the largest fish on this planet and grow up to 39 feet in length. They are filter feeders and filter a whopping 1,585 gallons of water an hour, eating small shrimp, fish and plankton by using their gill rakes as a suction filter. They are known to migrate thousands of miles to different feeding grounds. Many whale sharks have only lived months to a few years in captivity, except one in Japan who has survived more than 26 years. However, in the wild, it is estimated that they can live up to 150 years in age. In fact, all sharks in captivity don't live as long as they do in the wild. So should these large, plankton-eating migratory sharks be kept in captivity? Well, the whale sharks in Georgia Aquarium were bought from fishermen and were destined for the dinner table. So from that point of view, these particular sharks are definitely better off in the aquarium. They have access to world-class medical care and healthy food, and they are very well looked after. And the aquarium works hard to educate people about the sharks, which is always a good thing. The money generated by ticket sales goes toward whale shark research and conservation in the wild. The aquarium carries out field research on whale sharks that visit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, where they satellite tag the whales, carry out aerial surveys, and identify the whales using photographs. In the aquarium itself, vets and researchers study the whale shark in the Ocean Voyager exhibit. They look at their growth, behavior, health and genetics. Using staff and volunteers, each individual shark also has a record taken of its behavior, which will help staff to understand the sharks and so better care for them. They have also been looking at their blood chemistry and mapped their genome using tissue samples from the sharks. At least in the case of the Georgia Aquarium, it may not be great for the individual whale shark, apart from having escaped being eaten, but it is definitely helping our understanding of these graceful giants in the wild. But what about great white sharks in captivity? Well, these have not done well at all. At various times, attempts at keeping great white sharks has been undertaken, but unfortunately, the giant beasts have usually only survived a few days. Okinawa Aquarium in Japan tried to keep one that had been accidentally caught by fishermen, but refused to feed while in captivity and died three days later. A juvenile survived at Monterey Bay Aquarium for six months before it was released, as it kept on eating its tank mates. The problem with great whites is that they live a nomadic existence. They can swim up to 50 miles a day and dive down to depths of about 3,900 feet. It would seem that if they can't do this, then they get depressed and even more aggressive. Another problem is that unless they are starving, they only eat live prey and refuse to eat already dead food. It is also possible that the artificial environment of a glass tank could confuse the shark's sense of electroreception. So should sharks be kept in captivity? As previously mentioned, my views pretty well line up with those of the Shark Trust. But in writing this, my personal view has shifted a bit. I am very intrigued by whale sharks in captivity, and I would go to see one if I had the opportunity. Some sharks kept in captivity, such as nurse sharks, like to have company. During the day, up to 40 of them can be found under ledges or rocks around reefs, huddling together. So is keeping them on their own or with maybe only one other companion fair on them? Personally, I think not. Let me know what you think about keeping sharks in captivity and take a look at the other shark videos to be found on my channel. I have a whole series called Spotlight on Sharks. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends and don't forget to turn on your notifications.